Hello, pro wrestling fans and people who randomly clicked on this video. I'm the Pro Wrestling Outsider. On February 1st, New Japan Pro Wrestling made like Tony Khan and made a huge announcement. For the first time ever, they were coming to Chicago. Well, technically to Villa Park, a Chicago suburb, but same difference. The show would be called Windy City Riot. It would be available on pay-per-view from Fight, and it would feature both the U.S.-based New Japan Strong roster and members of the main New Japan roster in Japan. John Moxley and Minoru Suzuki would later be announced for the show. Now, I've been a big fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling for about seven years now. It was, at one time, my favorite wrestling promotion, and it still ranks pretty high up there. Some of my favorite matches of all time came from New Japan during that period, and the amount of great memories that have come from watching New Japan shows and chatting with people about them online are too numerous for me to count. The biggest problem with my New Japan fandom, however, was that they were based in Japan. And I love live wrestling. I would have donated various organs to see a New Japan show live. When I first started watching, they weren't running US shows at all, and I thought I might have to go to Japan to see them, which was out of the question then, and is only slightly less out of the question now. When they started running shows in the US, I was over the moon. And they then proceeded to stick mostly to the West Coast and Texas, which I am nowhere near. So close, yet so far. So, you could probably imagine how I felt when I heard that their next US show would be happening in a city that's a four hour train ride away from me. I jumped at the opportunity. I bought three tickets to Windy City Riot, one for me, one for my partner, and one for our close friend who I attended wrestling shows with all the time before the pandemic. I wasn't even sure if we were going to go at that point, but I wanted to secure good seats in case we did. I talked to them, and they were on board. I was stoked. For one, I hadn't been to Chicago since I was a kid, and I'd only been with my parents for church-related business so this would be the first time I'd be there for pleasure. For another, this was my first live wrestling show since before the pandemic and the subsequent shutdown of Evolve, the promotion whose Michigan shows I used to frequent. And finally, I got to see one of my favorite pro wrestling promotions with some of my favorite people in the world. So, we booked an Airbnb and some train tickets and eagerly awaited the day we'd leave. We arrived in Chicago the day before the show and spent most of that day checking out Brighton Park, the neighborhood we were staying in. On the day of the show, we ate at this amazing Filipino breakfast place called Uncle Mike's Place. Shout out to Senpai Kai for recommending it. After breakfast, we went downtown, walked the Magnificent Mile, went to the mall, went to Millennium Park to see the Bean, almost locked ourselves out of our Airbnb, you know touristy stuff. Then we Ubered out to the Odium Expo Center in Villa Park for New Japan Pro Wrestling's Windy City Riot. Now, I don't want to give out his name, but our Uber driver was amazing. We talked all about life and religion and our beliefs. He even prayed for my success in this YouTube thing and opened up his sunroof so I could take this picture of the Odium Expo Center's sign. I hope he's doing well and continuing to influence others in a positive way. Such a nice guy. Now comes the occasionally fraught story of my own personal live experience with this show. So, we got to the center a few minutes before 6 p.m. when the doors opened. We immediately saw this. Look at this line! Still going, still going. Massive wraparound line. Interesting fact, this was the last pro wrestling show at the ODM Expo Center. It'll be closing in May. And the show sold out and was therefore absolutely packed. So it's a good send off for a venue that once regularly played host to the legendary ECW. Everyone around me in line was decked to the nines in wrestling merch, of course. 
we were all buzzing about the matches we were most excited to see. We finally got into the arena at around 6.40. Sadly, we only got in just in time to see the finish to the dark match, which was Rocky Romero and Wheeler Yuta versus Kevin Knight and the DKC. People were still filing in after it ended. I was a little disappointed in this because I really wanted to see Wheeler Yuta, but at least I got to see Rocky do his corner-to-corner -corner clotheslines. We bought some merch, I got a New Japan Strong shirt, my friend got a mock shirt. My partner and I then went to concessions to grab food. Big mistake. Concessions was having a rough time. We ended up waiting 20 minutes for a slice of cheese pizza. From where we were waiting, we couldn't fully see the ring, so my partner and I missed the first match and part of the second. I am a big LA Dojo fan, so it was a little annoying, but at least they were just wrestling the factory. I got to see that match and the parts I missed from the Team Filthy vs. Team New Japan strong match on the replay later, so no harm, no foul. At least I didn't miss anything huge. Well, we finally got our pizza and then finally got to our seats. Thankfully, we got to our seats in time to see the 286-pound J.R. Kratos do an insane dive over the turnbuckle. That was awesome. We then got to enjoy the rest of the matches uninterrupted. The only down parts of the evening were our concessions woes and these two guys sitting behind us who thought that making Dave Meltzer Tokyo Dome jokes, doing J.R. impressions, and yelling, that's the hardest part of the ring, over and over throughout the entire show was the height of comedy. Other than that, our live experience was pretty great. The stage setup looked nice. It was awesome to see that blue canvas in person. It was tastefully dark inside and the ring was well lit. We had great seats. And there really wasn't a single bad match on the card. The top three matches were really what everyone was there for, but the rest of the card more than did its job. The United Empire vs. Bullet Club match and Juice and Friends vs. TMDK Street Fight in particular were super fun live and the crowd was rocking for them, though they liked every single match. The US of J Open Challenge was answered by Shooter Shota Umino, Mox's old protege, who was returning from excursion in the UK. They had a very good underdog match. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. And of course, the top two matches in Minoru Suzuki vs. Tomohiro Ishii and John Moxley vs. Will Ospreay were out of this world and the crowd lost it for them. 9 out of 10 for both. Getting to yell Kaze ni nare along to Minoru Suzuki's theme was a long time dream of mine and I finally got to do it. He was the man who got me into New Japan Pro Wrestling so it was great to finally see him live. Suzuki vs. Ishii was an incredible extremely physical war of attrition with these absolute maniacs desperately trying to out macho each other. Lots of forearm and elbow exchanges, lots of chops, lots of kicks, some shot kickouts at one that popped the crowd, the usual New Japan strong style greatness. It's probably the best match I've ever seen these two have together, and they've had some wars, so that's saying something. Mox vs. Osprey, on the other hand, was just this glorious, super fast-paced summer blockbuster of a match. It was filled with huge spots, lots of brawling, double blading, insane athleticism from Osprey, lots of swagger and good selling from Mox, and a controversial finish. I'd missed seeing Mox live at the WWE shows I'd been to because they were SmackDown shows, and he was on Raw at the time, so seeing him here was amazing especially because this is honestly my favorite run of his career right now. The work throughout the night was very smooth. It looked good. It was great to see live, especially those top two matches. There were no catastrophic botches other than a table malfunction at the street fight and the weird ending to Osprey versus Mox, which might have been planned, but still let the air out of the room. There were lots of awesome spots and larger than life moments. There were some fun surprises too. Eddie Kingston coming out to challenge Ishii was awesome and got a huge pop. And of course, 
Shooter returning to challenge Jay White in the US of Jay Open Challenge was the moment of the night. And best of all, the show really felt like a classic New Japan show. It was the kind of thing I'd wanted to see live for seven years, the kind of thing I used to stay up watching until five in the morning. The structure where they started with tag matches and ended with white hot singles matches, the darkened look, the quality of the work, everything was just perfect. Yeah, sure, there were some new faces and the whole Japanese roster wasn't there, but the feel was there, the atmosphere was there, and that's important. Awesome live experience. All three of us loved the show and had a great time. And even though our Uber driver, who was supposed to take us back to the Airbnb, canceled on us after making us wait for half an hour, forcing us to call another Uber and wait 20 more minutes for that one, I was still super glad I went. Crazy day, fantastic show. Sadly, the great live experience of this show didn't directly translate to the extremely problematic fight broadcast. Those watching at home got a kitchen sink of technical issues thrown at them, from bad video quality to streaming hiccups to cameras showing low battery warnings on screen, the whole nine yards. A friend of my partner who was watching told them that the show was, and I quote, literally unwatchable and that he was going to get a refund. New Japan apologized, Fight offered refunds, and both vowed to make an updated replay available, which they did the following day. The updated replay seemed fine while I was watching it. The only problem was that the cameras had a hard time tracking the street fight, thus preventing the match from coming across as well as it did live. Other than that, if you're interested in seeing the show now, you could probably buy the replay with no issues. It's deeply unfortunate that such a good show was plagued by technical issues on the day it aired. New Japan and Fight really have to sort this out, or it could cost them new fans in the future. Overall, though, I loved New Japan Pro Wrestling's Windy City Riot, and I loved seeing it live. The big matches delivered, there wasn't a bad match on the undercard, and the atmosphere was everything I wanted it to be. If you have an opportunity to see a New Japan Pro Wrestling show live, do it. Whether you're in Japan or in the US, you're almost guaranteed to have a great time. We definitely did. I hope a New Japan Strong TV taping comes to Detroit sometime. I'll definitely be there. I had a great weekend in Chicago, and Windy City Riot was a big part of that. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit like. If you didn't, hit dislike. Tell me what the best live wrestling show you've ever seen is in the comments. And as always, hit subscribe and the bell if you want to see more videos from me as they come out. I'll see you next time.